Hello class, Miss Arians and Mrs. Colbrubius here and today's video is going to be on pH and molarity calculations. The first thing that we are going to start off with is pH and what pH does is pH measures the concentration of H plus ions. Right, so um, when you have a pH scale, um, our lowest uh, number on the pH scale, scale is always going to be an acid and our highest is always going to be a base. Cool. And then we have seven in the middle, which is going to be our neutral spot, and that's normally water. And this is because acids are um, characterized by having H's in front, so things like HCl, H2SO4. We know that these are acids because of their H's, and it means that they have a really high concentration of this hydrogen ion. Where bases, on the other hand, they have high concentration of OH ions and a very low concentration of H. Um, plus ions, and so they are things like NaOH, lithium hydroxide, this is a hydroxide ion. So uh, when you think about water being right in the middle, it is neutral because we have this equal amount of H plus ions and OH ions. And two H's and one O is? H2O. H2O, and that's why water is neutral. Yes, and there is a calculation that goes along with pH, and we're going to talk about that next. Um, oh, sorry, here's another pH scale actually with just a couple uh, common things that you can relate to, I guess, to see the pH. So um, if you look at vinegar, vinegar is an acid and it has a pH of 2.9. We do have seawater there at 8.0, so it's a little more basic, and then bleach, which is a 12.5, which is going to be basic as well. Right, and then what's interesting is like you have cola that's here, it's like 2.5, when like battery acid and your stomach stuff. acid. Yeah, they're, I mean, right, real close. So that's why it rots your teeth, yeah. So, there you go. So our calculation here, the calculation is pH is equal to the negative log of H plus ions. Um, so when we solve these, we're gonna actually going to do the inverse of log, which is the natural log, which is kind of like just taking down the exponent. Um, and then it is, our exponents are normally always negative, and then the negative at the log cancels it out and it becomes positive. That's right, and so what's really easy about this calculation, if we were to actually put it into the calculator and do it, uh, this number isn't significant enough um, to change the actual number that we're going to get. Uh, so when you see something like this, we could either do the calculation or what's even easier is you can just look at this exponent. Since it's negative seven, we know that the pH is going to be equal to seven, which is neutral. So um, the concentration is 4.5 times 10 to the negative seventh of these hydrogen ions, and that negative seventh is going to show you what the pH is. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to be negative seven, because that's not on the pH scale. Yes. So let's do a couple of problems here. The next one we have, if a solution has a um, hydrogen concentration of 7.6 times 10 to the negative ninth molar, it, is it acidic or basic solution? And explain. So this one again, we're just going to look at that negative nine exponent. Mm -hmm. And so our pH is going to be equal to? Nine. Nine, and so like on a test we might, um, when we're talking about explaining, we'd say with um, that many hydrogen ions that this would be a basic solution. Perfect. Let's look at the next one. Pretty easy as well. We have a concentration of 1.3 times 10 to the negative second. So our pH is just going to be 2. 2. And so when we ask you to explain, this is going to be a larger, because remember negative 2 is bigger than negative 9. This is a smaller number. This is a larger number. So since this is a larger number of hydrogen ions, this is going to be an acidic solution or an acid. And so it's really just understanding um, how big or small this number is, and that's increasing or decreasing the amount of hydrogen ions in it. More hydrogen ions is going to be acidic, less hydrogen ions is going to be basic. Exactly. Next is molarity, and molarity is going to be the con concentration of water um, to dilute an acid or a base. And I like to think about the Kool-Aid example that's on the website. And if we have a strong Kool-Aid, there's going to be less water. If we have a weak Kool-Aid, it's going to be more water. So it goes very well with acids and bases as well. Right, so you think about maybe um, putting in like an entire cup of sugar in a packet of um, 
Kool-Aid in a glass that you're going to drink out of. That's going to be mostly full of sugar. When you put the water on top, it's just going to be sick, like sy syrupy, just really concentrated. And so this would have what we call a high molarity, meaning that it has a lot and lo a lot of ions, an increased number of ions, and not very much water. Where on the other hand, if you took a five-gallon bucket, so now you're talking about one of those big buckets that have like the handle on them, you know, and you put one cup of sugar in it, okay, and with one packet, and then you filled the rest of it with water. Now you take a drink of this, and it's going to be pretty nasty because it's going to taste mostly like water. So a low molarity here, and it's going to have um, the same. Actually, these are going to have the equal amount mm -hmm. of ions. Mm -hmm. But it's going to so, more water. But since it has such a higher number um, of water molecules, we have a high number of water, it's going to decrease the molarity of these ions. So now maybe we, it just looks like this, where over here it's very, very thick. Okay? So there um, is a calculation with this. We order in... Um, 12 molar acids and really strong molarity. We don't want a lot of water because then we'd be purchasing water. So um, like a 12 molar acid has very little water, mm -hmm. very strong um, ions, yeah. a lot of amount of ions, I guess, little right. water. And so then we need a different, um, you know, we don't ever use 12 molar acid because it'd eat right through your clothes. Mm -hmm. And we don't want you guys using 12 molar acids. So what we do is we dilute them with water to make a six molar acid to make a three molar acid to make a point zero a one molar a point one molar a point zero zero, zero one molar acid and as we go this way we're getting more and more water so mm -hmm. molarity really deals with just it's the amount of water and okay. so with the amount of water, obviously it, our 0 .001 molar acid is not going to be as strong as our 12 molar acid right. as well. It's basically water. Mm -hmm. Mostly. Yep. So we do have a calculation to go with this as well. And with our calculation, we do have a formula to use, and that is M1 times V1 is equal to M2 times V2, where M is the molarity. And this is going to stand for molarity. And V is the volume. And remember, volume is normally measured um, in milliliters or liters. Right, milliliters. Okay, so what we go ahead and do is we have to read our problem. And it says, if you need 60 milliliters of 3 molar, a three molar HCl, how much 12 molar acid do you need? Okay, so... The first, they're all, we're always going to give you two of these. Mm -hmm. So either, and it's always going to be the first one. It doesn't matter which ones are first. It's just the first two you have. So you see, this one is milliliters. So this is going to be your V1. So 60 milliliters is your V1. And this right here, anytime you see this big M, that's standing for molarity. So our M1 is going to be three mole. So now we just got to plug it in. So we have three molar times 60 milliliters is going to be equal to we have our 12 molar so now we just got to decide is that a volume or is that molarity that is a molarity because of the capital M so now we write 12 here and then it's basically like taking it times X this is our question mark so what we are looking for how much acid do we need we're talking about how many milliliters do we need so Miss Aarons and I do this all the time so we're saying we need a three molar acid for our lab. We have 60 students, each of them need one milliliter. So we know we need this much, and we have a 12 molar acid. That's what we bought, because that's what costs the least amount. Mm -hmm. So now we need to figure out how much of that 12 molar acid that we need, and then we're gonna add water to it, because we're going to dilute it down to give it less ions to take it from a 12 molar very concentrated to something that's three molar that's less concentrated. Correct. So. Now you just use your basic math, um, and so we're just going to divide by 12 molar on both sides. Obviously, these cancel, and now we do the calculation. So 60 times 3 divided by 15 milliliters. Milliliters. Okay, so what Miss Aarons and I um, of 12 molar 
HCl. Okay, so what Miss Aarons and I would then do is we would go get our 12 molar acid. Yep. We would pour it into a beaker, weigh out, or get um, measure out 15 milliliters. Yep. And then we would add. We'd add it uh, water up to 60 milliliters. So if we have a graduated cylinder here, and 60 milliliters is the top, okay, and then down here we have 15 milliliters of the 12 molar. Now to get it to the 3 molar, all you do is add water. So now, once you add water to the rest of this, that's going to give you that 3 molar because to decrease molarity, you add right water. Well. So this just gives you the amount of acid you need and then always the rest of it to get to the volume that you have here, you just add water. So we would need 45 milliliters of H2O to get our 60 milliliters of six, three molar acid. Great, have a great night. Bye, see you.